happening right now. Tens of thousands of people in North Carolina are without power. Going on almost 48 hours with the lights off. And why? Because of this, investigators say someone rammed their way through the gates of two power substations and started shooting and damaging the vital equipment. It was a terrible act and it appears to be an intentional, willful and malicious act. Crews are working to restore power to Moore County, but Duke Energy says it could be a couple more days before everyone gets their lights back on. This is exactly the kind of vicious attack on the power grid that we've been warning about for years now. In fact, my first story on the power grid was almost a decade ago after a similar damage was done to another substation. So this is not the first successful attack on our critical infrastructure, but we all want it to really be the last one, Absolutely. right? All right, so we're going to dig into what vulnerabilities are out there and then also how they can be fixed. Starting off looking at one of these attacks caught on camera. Back in 2013, we first showed you this surveillance video. It shows the flashes of light created when more than 100 rounds were fired at Pacific Gas and Electric substation transformers. The attackers also cut six fiber optic cables, racking up more than $15 million in damage. Power wasn't lost, but industry experts say the sophistication and scale was unlike anything they'd ever seen. This event uh, caused us and the entire industry to take a new and closer look at our critical facilities and what we can do to protect them. After the attack, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission directed the industry to write new rules for physical security as transformers and other critical equipment often sit in plain view, protected by just a chain link fence and a few security cameras. Since that time, there have been almost 700 physical attacks on power plants across the U.S. According to an energy grid watchdog who runs the site Grid Security Now, earlier this year he told CBS's 60 Minutes. We've had disasters in the past, but they've generally always been regional in scale. What we've never had is a national scale blackout, which is completely possible under some known threats, such as the cyber threat, the physical security threat, or even extreme weather. And the U.S. public is completely unprepared to survive without the electric grid for any period of time whatsoever. The government is well aware of these problems. In fact, the Government Accountability Office has issued several audits laying out in detail the weaknesses in the power grid and making recommendations to secure our power supply. The biggest of those reports came out in 2019. And as of October of this year, the GAO said these recommendations have not been implemented yet, leaving the grid vulnerable. So after all this time, what's being done to guard power substations, especially after the attack on our neighbors to the east of Moore County? We sent WFMY News 2's Daniel Cruz to see what security there is in the triad. Duke Energy manages more than 32,000 miles of transmission lines across several states, all feeding in to substations just like this one here in Greensboro. This one surrounded by fencing taller than I am, barbed wire along the top, and signs noting that there is electronic surveillance. But Duke Energy says there are security measures that you can't see. We understand that we're critical infrastructure. And so we do uh, incorporate multiple layers of security at all of our facilities. And, and across our system. The Moore County Sheriff says they will have additional security at substations throughout their area over the coming days. I did reach out to our local law enforcement here to find out if they plan to put in place any additional security measures. So far, we've only heard back from Randolph County, and at the moment, they are not planning any additional security precautions. Reporting in Greensboro, Daniel Cruz, WFMY News 2. Here's a real eye opener. A report by counterterrorism experts in the federal government says if a terrorist knocked out just nine of the right power substations across the country, power could go out across the entire nation from coast to coast. We're talking about a total blackout that might last days. It could be crippling to our economy and life threatening. 
To help stop that from happening, President Biden's infrastructure bill passed into law this year has money to upgrade the transmission line. All right, so that helps protect against physical attacks, but it does not address the potentially even bigger threat, and that is a cyber attack, something that's already happening on other key utilities like water departments. Listen to how one worker actually caught the hackers in the act. The guy saw his, his cursor and mouse moving on the screen and, and clicking on things and changing the uh, sodium hydroxide levels in the water. I mean, that's it's shocking. And of course, who can forget the attack on Colonial Pipeline right here in Greensboro? It shut down gas supply to the triad for days last year. President Biden signed an executive order to protect against another attack. It required higher standards of security software for fuel pipelines. Now, Gas Buddy says if something were to happen, they are ready and there's preparations in place. There are plans, um, or I should say uh, various entities of government often plan for uh, the potential for such attacks on infrastructure so that uh, there aren't as many surprises if, if something like that does happen. A big problem in fighting hackers is that there aren't enough people trained to protect our, com our computers, but the UNCG has a plan to change that with a new training program. You don't need a whole lot of skill to launch an attack, but you need a whole lot of skill to stop the attack. Well, the cybersecurity programs at UNC Greensboro aims to give students the necessary skills to protect your country's technology. Dr. Kane Smith created the curriculum five years ago, and the first class started in 2019 with about 30 students. Now they have 100 students just in that cybersecurity class alone. Now, while their program is growing, teachers say class sizes could triple in the next 10 years, and there still would not be enough professionals to meet the current demand. We do not have enough cybersecurity professionals. There are literally millions of unfilled jobs in this area. There is simply not enough talent and enough qualified individuals. One option they have is for anyone looking to get into cybersecurity. You don't need any prior experience in the field. It is a year long online program with students expecting to make anywhere, get this, from 60 to 90,000 right out of the gate. You can find more information about the classes that UNCG offers on our website, WFMYNews2.com.